we'll, we'll make a start. Well, thank you everybody for signing up for the workshop. Um, this is just going to be a bit of a taster session really into working with pewter. So you're going to get to do the fun bit. You're going to be pouring the molten metal. So it's the bit that everybody enjoys doing. So. Um, I'm, well, I'm Fleur and I realised this year that actually it's been 30 years this year since I was first introduced to Pewter. So, as you can tell, it's been quite a while and I've obviously, and I just have a real passion for it, love using it. There are so many different techniques and processes you can use with it. I trained as a silversmith at Sir John Cass in, it's changed, it was the City of London Polytechnic, the Guildhall University, and I think it's now the London Metropolitan University. Um, and I then went on to the Royal College of Art where I continued to do um, working with pewter and making my accessory, my homeware and my sculpture pieces. And today we're going to be doing, uh, just to give you a brief introduction, it's, we're going to be take, doing some gravity casting so you'll all get one of these rubber moulds which you will then come up here and have a go at pouring into the pewter and then we'll do a little bit of cleaning up so you'll all go home with a cast pewter object. So, pewter itself, it's 92 to 98% tin, and then it's copper and antimony. So the mix varies depending on whether it's being used for casting or for sheet work. So I get it in sheet, but also in bars like this, which are then melted into the pot. But if I pass these around, you can all have a look. Um, there are the two main methods of working with pewter that I use are gravity casting and centrifugal casting. So gravity casting is what you'll be doing today. So you'll be pouring it straight into the rubber mould, so which is like this. Uh, but I also do centrifugal casting, which is um, where it's put between two plates and then this mould spins around and that centrifugal force pushes the pewter into the mould. So that's good for when you want to create multiples of something, or if you're doing something quite fine. These are actually mistletoe branches that I do at Christmas. But um, you wouldn't be able to cast this into uh, the pewter into this doing gravity casting because they're so long and thin, the pewter would cool too quickly. So it's the centrifugal force actually spins it into the mould a lot quicker. So it's a good way of doing that one. So if I <laughs> you're my stepsy point of as well. There's, well, as I was saying, there are so many techniques and processes you can use with pewter, and with casting, there are a lot of more experimental ways of doing it. There's, well, it, so the cuttlefish casting. This isn't probably as experimental, but it's a really good introduction to working with pewter. So with this one, you get. You probably, you may have seen them when you've been on the beach. I actually live in Little Hampton, so I'm no, I think I'm getting a bit of a reputation as the local eccentric walking around with my carrier bag full of cuttlefish at the moment. But um, you, you dry the cuttlefish and then you can actually cast straight into it. So it gets the texture of the bone on there as well, which is a really simple way of doing it. You do it with silver casting as well, but with the silver, because the temperature is so hot, it actually destroys the cuttlefish. But with pewter casting, which you'll see, we, I cast it about 290 degrees. So it's very low in comparison to other metals. So if I pass these around, and you can get so these as well. So you, if I put these around, these are just so you can actually see the texture of the bone on those. Yes, yeah, oh, you're right in there, sorry. <laughs> there you go. There's, because the, the rubber, we use rubber moulds with the cuttlefish, um, sorry, with the casting, and it's called curing, it means you can use, you can make moulds of anything, so it can be an organic thing, so I don't know if any of you have seen these down on the beach, the mermaid's purses, so these have been done that and there's a pea pod so you can just make molds from those as well i tend to use i make carved waxes and use those to make my original patterns that you probably see from the, my work in the other room more of an idea but it's just to see how much freedom you've got with it and the sort of things you can you can do so, um, there's also another way which is a really simple basic way is um, 
casting into aluminium foil. So this has just been aluminium foil scrunched up and the pewter poured into it. And then you just peel off the aluminium foil. So, and this one here, it's got a stone set into that one. So the stone was placed in the foil. The, the pewter then poured around it, so it actually becomes a like little setting for the for the stone in there. And then you'll, what, I brought the two of them because what you can see is the contrast. Oops, maybe jump. <laughs> the contrast one's blackened and one isn't. So it just gives you an idea of because when it's all shiny like that, you're not necessarily picking up all of the detail in it, but with, just by blackening it a little bit and then polishing it back, you can really see more of the detail. It highlights it a lot more. There you go. You can even, because it is such a low temperature, you've probably seen it, I don't, if you've got children in schools, they actually cast into MDF moulds, uh, wooden moulds. They use processes where they pour the pewter into it because it doesn't affect the wood. So you can directly like that, which they do a lot in schools and colleges. But also, I was recently teaching somebody and she, made, she makes glass bowls and she wanted to try pouring it onto cardboard and actually managed to get some really lovely shapes, just use the rippled effects of this is just a sample of one of them, but you just to see. And it didn't actually burn the cardboard, so you can, that's what I say, you can do so many different things, try so many different processes with it. So it's, it's such a fun material and you can really explore and play with it and try lots of different things, which is what's great about the competition upstairs. You know, everybody, the students are all trying lots of different things, so. But that's just a brief introduction to pewter, so now we'll get on to the casting bit so you can all get up and have a go. But So I've got my melting pot here, which um, the pewter here, it's, it's set at 290. So that's a good temperature for pouring into the rubber mould. I'm going to just put me, it's all safety equipment as well, so make sure you get your goggles on. But, we're going to, I have a selection of moulds and I'm going to just do it as a bit of a lucky dip, just go around with the box so you choose one because, rather than everybody trying to decide which to do. So, but just to, to start with, so you'll all be given one of these moulds like this, which is a two part mould, which what we need to start by initially is to actually put the, you have to put talc onto the mould, so it's just dabbing the talc on and then brushing off the excess. So if we tap that together, so you don't want a build up of talc in the mould. But the talc helps the pewter to flow around the mould and to release from the mould. So we need to put that within it. And then I'm going to clamp that between the two pieces of wood. So you'll all be doing this. So <laughs> If you don't want to do it and you'd rather I poured it for you, then that's fine. But I have a bet on with another person in there saying that nobody will want You'll have to pour it for all of them, so you've all got to do it, so I'll win my bet. So, and then clamped between the wood. So I'm setting it slightly below the top of the wood, just so that if any flows over the top, it goes down the side. It's not going to go over onto my clamp. And you're just going to put that around either side. And we're not, you're not really squashing it really tight, because obviously if you squash that really tight, the cavity inside is going to be squashed. So what would be a nice bulbous shell will suddenly become concave. So you're wanting to, all it's doing is holding the two pieces of rubber together while we pour the pewter in, because obviously you don't want it to open up and then pour everywhere. So I'm put that there. Put your gloves on. And then... Um, I don't know if you want to come and just stand around maybe a metre away just so you can see while I'm pouring off the top but it's just so you can can, can you see it's just so it's you can see while, while I'm doing the pouring so when you're all having a go so the pewter itself, you obviously, any castings that go wrong, the thing that's great about it is just go straight back in the pot. So there's no waste with it. If it's actually, if it's not worth spending time cleaning up a casting that's not perfect, because actually it's quicker to cast it again. It's the cleaning up bit that takes ages. So like when I'm doing my work, the casting to the quick bit, then I have to spend ages filing, emery and polishing. So that's the part that takes the time. So. So when obviously when you're putting the pewter back in the pot, you may have bits of dust in there or where it's coming in contact with the air, it's like a 
sticking on the surface, the dross, it's cold, but you don't want that going into your casting. So just using the scraper so we can scrape that off the, and then you've got nice shiny metal underneath. So if you can see that. Like liquid silver. Yeah, yeah, that's the. <laughs> oh, wow. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now what we want to do is we want to get that pewter into our mould as quickly as possible because obviously if you're sl too slow doing it, the temperature's cooling before it's even got into the mould. So you're wanting to keep it as close to that temperature as possible. For when it gets into the mould. So we've got the tray so you don't need to worry about it spilling anywhere, you, it's, it's all safe so you're fine with that. So, so we need to check that the moulds, the, the ladle's nice and warm so just check that that's pouring off there so that's just pouring off nice and cleanly. If it was too cool it would just stick to there and then straight away the temperature's dropped and it's dropping again before it gets and you, it just means you don't have really good castings. So you're wanting to keep that temperature to keep those castings, to get good castings. And I didn't mention as well the dross we scrape off the surface because if you don't and then you pour that into your mould you get little imperfections in your casting so you'll get little bits of black and it's just not very nice. So, so quickly just pour that into that. So don't worry if it goes over, it's surprising how little you'll actually need, so it's a bit deceptive, so if it goes over like that, that's fine. It's better to have it spilling over than not filling the casting, because if you pour it, stop, then pour it again, it's already started to cool, so it'll, it could just snap off. If you, I mean, these are all quite small ones that you're going to be doing, but if you were doing a bigger one, it would then it would um, come apart. So this is obviously still going to be quite warm, but I don't know if you can see, it's now gone solid and it's gone like it'll go matte so you'll see it's not that shiny colour anymore it's actually gone quite matte so this then just unscrew and keep your gloves on because we want to keep that it's still going to be quite warm and just using these pliers and then you can see we've got the shell So I've put, there's a little pot of water just here, so we can just cool them off in there so you can handle them. And then once you've got your casting, we then want to, it's called the sprue, which is just on the end, so we don't want that, we want to get rid of that, so we can just use some snip. So we're just going to cut that off there, and if you just put the excess in the, on the table, we're going to be doing the bits over there on the table, this part. So we've got the carry cast in there, and then there's some files and emery paper. So we're going to just, that's now created quite a sharp edge on there, so we're just wanting to get rid of that. So just using the file, just going round and trying to follow the, no wonder I can't, I'm just thinking I can't see, <laughs> trying to follow that line. So you're getting, a, getting rid of all those sharp edges, and then we're going to use the emery, oops, sorry, grab one of them. I'm going to use the emery stick just to again go over where we filed so you get a nice finish and then we have some brass brushes or steel wool so you can just go over that and just buff it up a little bit it's going to be a slightly satin finish I mean it doesn't you can see it's pretty polished anyway but then you've got have your casting so everybody shall go away with a casting. As I say, it's going to be a lucky dip, but I will go around and so. <laughs> so that if I right, where have I put my box? Just there. I'll just hide that one in there so you don't see where it's going. Although giving away it's a bit hot. So. Do you, do you ever warm the mould as well? Um, no, if I'm doing plaster casting or something like that, sometimes it needs the mould to warm up or a more commercial casting where they're using like the metal moulds, they'll need to heat up the moulds initially before they pour the pewter in because obviously when it comes into contact it will um, cool it down too quickly. Sometimes it can get too hot and you need to actually just rest the mould to let it cool down a bit as well. But. So, 
um, some of them have come apart a bit. Some of them have got two in, so but that's just because they're a bit smaller. So if it's same thing, you're just pouring it straight into it if you've got one with two in. But if I, sorry, some of them have come apart, so I don't want you to end up with ones that don't. So if you'd like to pass them round and take one and, and then, is there anybody that really wouldn't like to cast, would prefer if I poured it for them? Remember my bet. <laughs> no? <laughs> Excellent, right, that's a tenner. <laughs> so once you've got mould, and um, who would like to come up first? <laughs> right. So if we set it up here, so. Now we're going to put these on here. Do you have a jacket with you or anything? Yes, Would you mind, just yeah. because of the molten metal, just to be on the... It's just, it's just while you're pouring, that's so... Just if anything splashes, just to be safe. There's different size gloves as well. Some goggles... Oh, we well, actually you want to set it up first. So you'll need to... If I bring up the talc. So... So you just need to put some talc on your mould first and then you can use the brush just to brush off any excess. If we do run out at the end, we can always recast when it goes back to the billion. I can't remember how many I've got. So you've done that. So if you then put the two together and just sandwich them between that piece of wood. So if you just put that to the end so your clamp doesn't have as far to go and you're, you've got everybody watching you by the time everybody else will be busy doing things. So you <laughs> yeah, this is a bit where you, you're just trying to get hold of it. Actually, you could be setting up yours as well once we're in there. <laughs> so once this is, if you want to move along to here, and then Angus, you could set up in there. So again, Talcon. That's it. Oops, sorry, I've done that too tight. No, that's okay. That's it. That's yeah. It's a little bit tight, so we don't want to squash it too much. So then, this um, you probably want the gloves that I used actually just there. So you just scrape the dross off the surface and just put it down into the pot. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, and then just dip it in, check it's running cleanly off the pewter. Yeah, so you can then just put that in and pour that in. That's it. Is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. So if you then put it, tip it into the pot, and just put the flat side down on the lid on the, so it keeps it, it keeps it warm and it stops it rolling off. So if you just put that back, so you can see that's, it's gone quite quickly because it's yeah. the, all of you are going to be getting a mould that's not had anything poured into it, so it will cool quite quickly. So you can open that up. It'll be still be warm when you want, but if you use the can use the pliers to just take out the mould. That's it. And this is the like oh, Christmas present. And then you can use the pliers, and if you just take that out, there you go. Actually, if I move the water down here, and then we can get a, a one-way system going, can't we? <laughs> there you go. So if you just want to put it in there, it'll cool it down for you, so you can handle it. And then I'll put these over there. So that, and then when you're ready, you can just cut the sprue and do the filing all on the table. There, if you want to, there might not be enough room for everybody, but we can move around. Lovely. Are you ready, Angus? <laughs> there we go. That's it. So if you put your yeah, if you put your piece down in here and your your mould in there, and uh, just check that's not it's a little bit tight. That's it. 
So you're just wanting it to hold it, roughly. Uh, you can just leave that there, yeah. And then everything's on the table there, ready to clean it up. So if you just scrape, oh yeah, sorry, glasses. So if you scrape the dross off the surface, the, with this one, yeah. You need extra hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine, that should be good, right. yeah. So you just drop that in there. And then just check the pewter's running off your ladle nice and cleanly, so drop that in. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then just, just pour it in. <laughs> It's fine, you can half fill the ladle because once it starts to flow over the top, you'll know that it's full. That's fine, yeah, that's done. done. Yeah, so you can tip that back in. And then you can just put that flat, if you put it flat down on the, that's it, so it doesn't roll off. So, and just, yeah, that should be ready to open up. <laughs> so have you put yeah. talc on there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't put the sandwich in between this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to make it. Just a bit soft. So you can open that up. So it's going to be. A... Oh, uh, right. Yeah, well. So that's not gone in completely. So maybe we do that one again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it might be the mold. It, I'll, blame it the the mold. mold yeah. I'll blame the mold. I'll blame the mold. So. Uh, yeah, do you want, I mean, you could do it in this one because we know that right. one works. Yeah. If we know that right. definitely does. It's got a yeah. bigger hole in it if you want to. So if you want to talc that again. Sometimes it can, if it only, if you sometimes when you've making, made a mould, if the pouring gate, you want to start with your pouring gate, it's called the pouring gate, sorry, the bit at the top. It's like a cone shape. And and you, you, what you're trying to do is make it as small as possible near your casting, but bigger at the top, so that there's that sh the, there's the area to the weight to push it down into it. But obviously, the bit that's going into your casting, you don't want that too big because you're going to be cutting that off and filing it. And if you've got any detail in there, you lose it. So you're trying to keep that simple, small shape at the bottom. But if it's if it's too small, it, what can happen is it will pour into the bottom, fill the top, but nothing in the middle. So. It's best to slowly open it up a little bit at a time because you can cut it away, but you can't add to the rubber. So, as demonstrated with my bad mould, I will blame my mould. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say you might find it easier without the. It doesn't help having an audience. Now you're getting a taste of what it was like for me earlier. <laughs> Has anybody done any pewter casting before, actually? No. Should have probably asked that before, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> no, it's all right, don't worry. If you need any small, if you've got little details in it that you don't want, there's some little needle files as well, if you, if you want to get really precise. Did I miss something? How do you make the, the rubber mold? Um, I, so I, with these ones, I start with my pattern. It's called the pattern. So with these, it's a shell or um, there's all sorts. And then you make a Lego wall <laughs> around it and you set the pattern into plasticine or chavant. It's called chavant. It's an oil-based clay, but plasticine works just as well. I should, should have brought that bit with shouldn't I? So, um, so you've got your Lego wall around it and then you pour the rubber on top then you open that up, peel it apart, take off the chavant, the plasticine, and pour the second half. So it's, it's going back to there's being a child. You might want to put that there around the side, actually, because it's going to rock. Oh, right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, it's me, it's me. <laughs> it's just because you're at the front of the queue. You're, demo, you're my guinea pig. That's it, so just keep putting this. Excellent, that should be it. Yeah. Feel the weight in the ladle. Yeah, yeah. Really it's a bit, it's sort of initially, it's a bit, oh, yeah. It's a, that's fine. Well, that's that's nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, take it apart, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so, 
So now by the time you all get around, you'll know what to do because Angus has children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So if you just use the pliers and then there's the bowl of water behind you, you can just pop that in there so it just cools it down so you can handle it. Yeah, they, they either go from the welding ones. Are, so it's that, when it's done that, it's probably just a little bit warm still. Is it all right? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's good. You haven't got a lot of cleaning up to do on that one either. Lovely. Are you ready? You probably want these, those probably will be good for you. Sorry, that took so long. Don't be deaf, it's all right. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, it should be okay now, yeah. Do you want to go around? Is that all right to go around that way? <laughs> oh, yeah, need your goggles. <laughs> Thank you. I'll use the goggles. Yeah, there we are. That's lovely. Don't, yeah, don't forget, yeah. Yeah, you that's can take that. Good. Yeah, there's all the bits on the table over there. Just here? Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> How rude! <laughs> so yeah, just talc that rosemary and bang it together to get rid of any excess. So you're just going to scrape the dross off the surface. I should say as well, you don't need to have a melting pot like this. Before I got my melting pot, which actually I bought with when I became, I got second prize in the pewterist competition, so I went and bought myself a melting pot and a centrifuge. So that was that set me off with this. So. But you can just do it with a blowtorch and some fire bricks. So you just put, you just use a ladle like that, put some fire bricks around it, and use the torch, and then you can pour it in. So sorry, yeah. <laughs> snatch it off. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. So just check it's pouring off your ladle nice and cleanly. Yeah. And then... So about that much? Yeah. Oh, more than that, sorry. More. Yeah. Yeah. If you just half fill the ladle, because any you don't, it just goes down the side anyway. So it's a bit slow, so you need to be a bit quicker. Keep pouring. That's it. That should be fine. Yeah, so if you tip that back in and just... If anybody has any questions while we're going through it as well, just just ask. It's, that's still, can you see it's still a bit liquid there, mm. so we're just going to wait for that to cool down a little bit. It's obviously getting really warm in the marquee, it's keeping the pewter on. <laughs> <laughs> I should say as well, if ever you are going to try it, if you did want to try it and you were going to do it with cuttlefish or plaster moulds, just make sure they're completely dry because any moisture in the mould it can make it, 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 it does explode out of the mould. <laughs> yeah. It reacts to the water, so just make sure any tools or equipment you're using are completely dry. Yeah, that should be fine. So I just undo it? Yeah, so if you just undo that and open your mould. And then you can just use your pliers to. to yeah. Oh, you got the tortoise, yeah, the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'll be a bit hot, so if you use okay, the pliers right, yeah. just to, and then you can just dip that in your mold in the water just to cool it down. Just yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. It's only so it just it just to cool it down so you can handle it for when you're cleaning up so the. Just yeah, it. yeah, it's used just to make it so you can handle it really. I mean, normally we'd leave it to cool naturally, but it's, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so you have uh, the gloves. Oh, I'll just get the gloves for you. Sorry, can I just pinch the gloves on? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Oh, there's some small ones if they're too, well, they're on the end actually, maybe they'd be the right. There you go. Now you're welcome. So you can just cut the sprue off now and just file around its nose. Its nose should be pointed, so okay. you'll have a bit of work. You can't just go straight. <laughs> yeah, so if you just scrape the dross off the surface. Sorry, it's a bit slow because it's just the one word at a time. But <laughs> 
there? Yep, that's fine. And just pour that in. Keep going, keep going. That's it, it's okay. fine. Yeah, it's good. So you can see it's just oh, still it's just, a bit yeah, little, yeah. You know, sometimes you see it just a little bit liquid. <laughs> yep, that should be okay. Oh, yeah, you want it to come just round the side and maybe if you slide it over a little bit so because the, the clamp won't reach the middle if it's, if you see what I mean. Um, yeah, nope, so if we put it there, slide that over oh, like I that see. and then clamp it like that so that it can stand up in the base. It's not actually perfect. It doesn't matter, I won't do another one. Oh, we can do, we can go back round and do one at, at the end if you want, that's fine. So if I just cool that one down. If we all if we all have a go at casting and if you find it's not right, we can all go back in a loop and do it go to go it again so you can come back around on your loop. So you ready? You can come back and do it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So you want the horizontal or it doesn't That's fine like that. Yeah. I just check that is it the you don't want to do it that's quite tight. Oh. So you need to just loop them. If you do it too tight, you completely seal the hole. <laughs> that's better. That's it. That's good. So you just want the gloves. And there we are. So just scrape the dross off the surface. So if you just scrape that and then put it into the pot there, so that's it. So it's more just, yeah, pull in, that's it. And just, actually, is anybody left-handed? I didn't ask, is everybody, yeah. That's it, keep pouring, keep pouring, that's it. You want it so it's flowing over, it's better it flows over rather than it just being half full. So yeah, can you put that back in? And just put that on the side. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, so that's okay. I'd leave the gloves on while you open it up because it's still going to be a bit warm. Then you can just put it, use the pliers to just put it in the bucket just there. Oh, that's come out yet. Oh, if you use those, because it'll be a bit warm. That's good. That's come out well. Nice. Are you all right? <laughs> that's it. So <laughs> that's okay. So if you hold them like that, and then you can just there we go. You're just doing literally pulling. <laughs> oh, the gloves are too small. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not really helping you, am I? There you go. So if you drop that in the pot, you ready to go? Bigger shell mold. I'm just wondering whether that looks a bit strange. Yeah, we, actually, these are all done. So, do you want Can to choose? Okay, um, you'll need the pla the, tw uh, the cutters on the yeah. It should be cool now. Yeah. Do you want me to check? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's a bit warm. Do you want me to? I know I have asbestos fingers, and I go, oh, no, it's fine. And then somebody burns themselves. <laughs> there you go. So all of the cutters and things are just over there. Yeah. Yep. Go, yep. Tough, yeah. yeah, that's fine. So if you just check the pewter's pouring off there nicely. That's lovely. Yep, and there we go. So are you, are you comfortable holding it like that? Because I would more hold it like that so you can get a bit more control. Yeah. Does that feel better? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Keep going. Just a bit more. That's it. You see how it sucked it in? Yes. Yeah. That should be good. So you just flat down on the side. 
So if you wire, wool them, brass them, uh, brush them and things, you're on. <laughs> it look good? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, it's got some on yeah. <laughs> You could come and do it on <laughs> Oh, that's come out well. Excellent. Is that a bit warm? I was going to see. I was going to say, just keep, you can burn yourself for the photograph. <laughs> that's fine. You can suffer for your art. <laughs> Do you want to open oh, as soon as we're ready to go? Are you okay? Is that, is that okay like that? Yep, yeah, that's a little bit tight. Oh, okay. But that's, that's perfect. Yeah, that should be good. So if you put that in there. So there's files and emery paper and uh, pieces over there. If you let's have a. No, no, it's just enough so that you can get your ladle into a clean bit. That's yeah. Yeah, so it's initially. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. Like that? Yeah, that's plenty. Yeah, you can see if it's got a bit of a wobbly floor, mm -hmm. so you can sort of see. Oh. Are you below? Oh, you're trying to not have a hole. Yep, that should be okay. You can do that. Yeah, and you could just use the pliers just because it'd be a bit warm because that's quite a thick casting as well, so you don't want to burn your hands. Oh, it's to break off anyway. Oh, yep, yeah, that's coming. Does that matter? No, no, that's fine. It just saves you a bit of work cutting it off. Oh, right, okay. Is that going to make it? Don't no, no, it should be. That's it. That's it. So you can just put that in the pot and then cool that down. So you might just need to emery that a little bit rather than file. You might a little bit of filing. Is that too tight or is that? That's looking as though you're getting a bit tight because oh, okay. it's, can you see how he's yeah. squishing it in that oh, right, side? Sorry. You really need to go quite loose. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it would, you, all you're doing is holding it, you're together. just gripping it together so it. Trying to make sure I've got the hole in the right. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Right. So you're ready. That's all right. They're ready right. to go. So if you put your safety glasses on and then. Yeah. That yep, so do you're I, just. Do I just literally pour it through there and leave that in there? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's good. So am I just checking that it's okay first? Yep, yeah, so just getting a nice clean bit, that's it, that's good. And then you can just pour that in. So scoop it into your ladle and pour it. Is that clean enough? Yeah, that's good. Do I need just in the hole or? In, just in the hole, yeah, because okay. that's it, that's enough now, that's perfect. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. So if you and just then. put that flat side down on the side of there. And you see how it's wobbling just a little bit, so. I've still got it on the hole. Does it need any more? No, no, that's and fine. That's yeah, fine yeah, yeah, no, that's OK. Yeah, yeah. Does that need to be left any longer? No, nope. so you can probably lift that out and you can open that up and just use the pliers because it's obviously still going to be quite warm. Lovely. I like that. That's come out well. And then if you right. use those and you can just put it into so I'm the just picking it up. So you, yeah, you're just lifting it out of the mould and then dropping putting it in the water to cool it down so you can cut off your sprue. There you go. You, uh, do you want the bigger gloves? Yeah, Probably big do, ones. yeah. How long do I need to 
Oh, as soon as you can handle it, it's fine. It should should be okay now. Do you want me to feel? Yeah, that's fine. There's a cloth there You're as well. Nice and confident, aren't you? Oh, and I think you develop asbestos fingers when you you know what you're doing, don't you? Don't need me to tell you. <laughs> so if you put your mould in the tray, just so that it doesn't, because if you leave it there, it's going to... If I just put that in here, just so it doesn't flow everywhere. Oh, can I take the gloves off you? You certainly can, so I'll give you the gloves back. <laughs> and you're going to need the glasses as well, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yes, actually, I can handle that. Lovely. Thank you. Sorry. That's it. So we just put that in. You're all right. Sorry, do you need a hand? Yeah, probably. <laughs> so if you just slide that up to the end so that the clamp can grip it in the middle so okay. it's not too wide. And then if you just tighten that up. So that's plenty, that's plenty. Yeah. You, you're just holding it, you're not squishing it. <coughs> that's come out well. Lovely. Thank you. And the spray. You didn't got one. No, it's come no. off. Yeah. So you can just emery that mm -hmm. and that's done. So you ready to go on there? I need a pair of gloves. Yep, so you probably need the smaller ones on the end of the table. And then set your piece in the, that tray there. That's it. And then you can set that one up. So you've got your talc and your... Oh yeah, use your gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Let me move. What do you do with the, uh, it? Like just goes off. back in the pot. Really? Yeah, so it's yeah. fine. It just it goes back in. And, and same with this, or is that now wasted? Um, that tends to be, uh, yeah, because it's got the the dust and the things in it. It's not really. Yeah. You can actually melt it down and get the pewter back yeah. off it again, but yeah, it's yeah, it's not the best. Yeah. So I'll take that off. Yeah. Yeah. Does it all come off in one? Do I need to take any more off? That should be fine, yeah, you can do that. And you said it gets quite heavy. Yeah. And about half full. Oh, it yeah. does get heavy. That's it, that's good. That and you can just put that. that back in there and flat side Sorry, down. And you can see it's wobbling a little bit, so we're just going to leave that. So does anybody have any questions about doing that? Has everybody got a piece to take away? Yeah, everybody's got one. Oh, nice thing. Yeah. Did you want to have another go? They like that. It's nature. <laughs> yeah, you can unclamp that one. Sorry, yeah. How it should be. It's a little bit. Yeah, it's quite tight. Yeah. That's it. That'd be right. Lovely. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. So if you use the pliers just to and put it in the water behind, use the pliers to take it out because it'll be hot. Okay. And then just put it in the tank behind the water. Right, I'll cut this off. It's come out. The yeah, the cutters are just on the side over there, and the the files and the emery. So I drop that in. So yeah, if you just put, use those pliers to lift it out of the mould. This is where I'm cutting. Yeah, do you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah. I can't there do you go. It. There you go. Thank you. That'll just cool it down Lovely, for you. you. Oh, can I take the gloves yeah. off you? Oh, you're all right in those gloves, yeah? That's oh, still take that. warm, isn't it? Thank oh. you. Thank you. Oh. oh, yeah. Thank you. So if you just scrape the dross off the surface. Um, did you? Oh, oh go pull in. Do you want? There's the, the, the if you want to. Yeah. That's fine, yeah, that's good. Did you want to have another go at your turtle? Can I? Yeah, get, 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 try and give it four legs. That's fine, yeah, you could pour that in. Like that. That's one. And then just pour it at the heart. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that should enough. be full now. That's enough. You can stop and you can just put that back in there. So we've just got a gentleman here and then you can... Have you got your mould still? Uh, no, we need to find the mould. Oh, there we are. There you go. Uh, no, you can keep that, but just talc your mould again and just re it with the... Yeah, yeah. 
So my next. So that's yep, yeah, that's ready to go. So so if you take your take the um, clamp off. Yeah, and then just using the pliers, you can drop it in the water behind you to cool it down. Right, so I just open this So up. if you just take that out of there like that, Yeah, that's it. And then pull and that then apart. And then you've got your shell. Oh, yeah. Wow. Can I just check? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. So the, the water's just behind you. And then you're ready to go. So, oh, there's some big gloves there if you want behind you. Um, you can use the wire wool or the brass brush just to buff it up. It gives it a sort of matte finish. Yeah. So there should be some. <laughs> so you can use the brush or just some wire wool. Just to, it just it gives it satin finish. Do you want me to turn? If you just pull some. No. There you go. There's a bit. <laughs> You're ready to go. You can scrape off the surface. So if you scrape the dross off the surface. Does anybody have any questions? Is everybody all right? Yeah. No, we're on. <laughs> Yeah, so you're ready to pour that, so if you want to pour that in. Yeah. It does, it's only minutes, it's only ever usually minutes, yeah, you're not waiting hours, it is quite quick, yeah. So yeah, pour it in nice one smooth pour, rather than bitty, that's it. And you can just put that back in the pot, and flat side down. Away. Yeah, um, and that's. What do you think? Yep, that should be okay. Should. Yep. So you can, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could just unscrew that and then use the pliers because it'll be a bit warm and the right. behind you. Oh, that's come out well. Good. So you can use the pliers just to yeah. put it in the water just to cool it down. So you can cut the sprue off just with the cutters over there. So you've, got your, you've got your acorn. Yeah, you've managed to clean it all up okay. Oh, that's come up well. Looks good. You've got your castings. Your, that it casting? How? <laughs> Never forgiven. <laughs> Yeah, you're ready to go give it another go. No, it's all right. Um, goggles? Oh, I'll just grab them. Can I just pinch the safety specs off? Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, <that> <laughs> Let me to take them. You're all right, sorry. Thank you. Did you want to cut the sprue off or are you leaving? I like it. You're leaving. Oh, uh, okay, I like your style. Yeah, it's got its own little mini stand. Yeah. So I'm going for the stand. <laughs> You're creating a sculpture. So you can just use, uh, well, unless you want it to stand, like the ladies just there. Oh, sorry, yeah, and the clamp. Yeah, so you're ready to go. I'll just check it. I think that might be what it is. It's too tight. So maybe it was a bit too tight before. You probably sealed up its foot because it's quite thin, so that bit. Yeah. <laughs> so scrape the surface. This is so fascinating, this bit. The, yeah, that's the thing. It's, uh, I used to demonstrate at Art in Action, and I used to take my whole workshop with me, and all anybody wanted to see was the molten yeah. metal. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yep, you're all right, so you, you know what you're doing now. <laughs> So have they come out? Oh, they've come out well. Good. 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 
That's it, so nice quick pour. So you've been a bit slow, just go for it. That's it. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. So you, it's just being confident with the pouring. Yeah, no, that's fine, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I love all this. The way it yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's something about it. it's such a lovely material. Mm. It's yeah. Even the off cuts a bit. Let me check that for you. Yeah, it is quite tight. You're, you're literally wanting to hold. It's just so it doesn't splay open. So it's just a really soft hold, holding it. Let me try again and see. Yeah. Yay. Yay! There you go. So if you use the pliers, just so because it, it might be a bit hot still. So we've just got one more to go. Has everybody, everybody got a casting and a finished piece to take away? Excellent. So if you scrape the, the surface, yeah. And you can just snip the nose off and yeah, it's just in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Here like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's hot. And just just go for it. Pour in. That's it. Enough? Yeah, it's enough. Lovely. And just flat side down. Oh, I am scared of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's ready. Yeah. yeah. So you can just open that up, and then just use the pliers because it's still going to be quite warm. You might want to just leave your gloves on while you handle it. But yeah. So that's the workshop finished. So hopefully everybody's got a nice piece to get a piece. Thank you. <laughs> and you've won me ten pounds. Thank you very much. <laughs>